There's one main thing that's wrong with this truck that is very annoying, and I'm just not gonna fix it. guys welcome back to another episode of the gmla youtube channel thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate it and i hope you enjoy this episode today we're going to go over my 400,000 mile over 400,000 mile 2007 suburban lt 4x4 i purchased this truck back in january of 2021 it is now october of 2022 which means that i've owned it for almost about two years and it's done a really good job and served me really, really well along with the family and work. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So we're gonna start with the exterior of the truck. Then we're gonna dive into the interior. And then of course, what everyone's waiting on, we're gonna dive into the, uh, the drivetrain here, uh, which is the original drivetrain. So that's gonna be real interesting. So let's start with the paint. Uh, the paint definitely shows wear and tear of 400,000 miles it is not in the best condition it does shine still and it definitely needs a lot of work if i wanted to put the work into it but to be honest uh, i don't really want to so i'm not going to worry about it i've washed it a handful of times and that's about it so in two years it's probably been washed maybe six times seven times max uh, i drive it through the car wash i've hand washed it maybe twice and yeah, there's not much to talk about the paint, but there's no significant dents or anything like that. Uh, I've done a really good job of not getting hit or hitting anybody. Uh, keep my fingers crossed. Uh, the truck uh, looks fairly decent for 400,000 miles, if you ask me. So one main thing with the body that you can't really see from any angle is right here under this door in the rocker. It's the only rust spot on the truck. And it's been through quite a bit of snow driving in the last two years. Um, I've driven to Michigan, which I think you guys seen there. Um, I've driven all over the Northeast and the East Coast when it's snowing outside. Um, but it's, it's held up really well, but that is the only rust spot. Over on the front, if you guys have noticed, this is a different front end. This isn't the original front end that would come on a Suburban LT. This is a 2009 Tahoe hybrid front end. And I really like the look of it compared to the typical Suburban that you would see. It's much different. We got a, a completely different bumper that goes a lot lower and has this lip down here. The V that you kind of see here goes all the way up into the hood, uh, which was swapped over as well. So the hood and the front bumper, which includes the grill and the headlights were swapped over. And if you guys can help me, I'm not completely sure why. One headlight is completely fogged up and the other one looks really, really good. I have no idea why. But again, 400,000 miles, can't complain. So here on the back end, again, you're gonna notice that it's different. That's because it is. And that's because it's from the 2009 Tahoe. The only thing that's not different is this rear bumper, which is all cracked and chipped on the bottom right down here. You can see there, that's a horrible crack, but it's really flimsy and loose. The tailgate is aluminum. So it's fairly light, but it's not an automatic tailgate, which is why I really did that. But I also changed over the taillights, which are 100% LED factory taillights. So when you look at it, it doesn't look like I threw on some aftermarket taillights to obtain the LED taillights. Uh, I really never have to worry about whether my taillights are working or not, because these up here are also LEDs. And this is neat because it's actually very different than the regular Suburbans and Tahoes where it comes down a little bit, like down here. This is recessed in, and I really like that look. It gives it a much more updated, modern look. That pretty much wraps it up from the outside. That little rust hole, got some 2011 Yukon Denali wheels on here, and not for the look, but because I picked these up as a complete set for $400 with brand new Goodyear tires on them. So, that is a freaking deal, man. I was really happy about that. $400 for some brand new tires and wheels. Can't complain. 
All right, so let's jump into the interior aspect of this and we're gonna start in the back. <laughs> this is funny to me. So for some reason, when I swapped over this tailgate, uh, the interior pieces aren't the same from the regular Suburban and Tahoe to the hybrid tailgate. So I had to leave this black trim instead of utilizing the factory cream colored trim or beige colored trim. But here's one thing that is annoying uh, that is wrong with the truck. In here is the uh, windshield wiper fluid line that runs through here. And unfortunately, I don't know where it's cracked or something. It doesn't work. And I'm pretty sure I plugged it in really well. Um, I think that it actually leaks and gets this a little wet if I push the button, which is kind of annoying. But that is definitely one thing wrong with the interior portion of this that is super annoying. I tote a lot of stuff back here. Typically, I have my two-ton jack. I have my whole tool set. I have my chain for engine deliveries. Uh, I have a lot of stuff back here so I don't leave myself stranded, including my spare tire. Unfortunately, underneath here, if you were to look, the carrier has been destroyed, and that was because I could not get it undone. I got a flat back here on this tire one time on the side of the road. I can't remember what state I was in, probably Kentucky or Tennessee, if I remember correctly. I could not get that tire off underneath, so I ended up ruining and damaging the carrier that holds the spare tire. So I usually have my full-size spare tire back here, my jack, my tools, and all that stuff. So carpet has been destroyed, but I'm sure I could clean it up really, really well if I wanted to. It's just dirt and grease and transmission fluid and whatever other kind of fluid you could think of. So let's head up to the front. So what's interesting is, although it is an LT, it did not come with this touchscreen radio. And for a while I had an aftermarket radio in there and it worked really well, but it took a crap on me. So now I put a factory touchscreen radio in it. And what's interesting is if you utilize a factory radio from another vehicle, it will be VIN locked. And I had this unlocked by PCM Tuners in Atlanta, Georgia. Reach out to Andy. I'll put a link in the description below, but he can unlock these radios once they're installed in your vehicle, which is super helpful. So thank you, Andy. Got that squared away. And as you can see, we do have a Roku right here. I'm sure a lot of people use those at home. I love these things. And that's for the TV. Basically, there's a harness that you can purchase that in the back will allow you to use RCA cables. And in the glove box, I have this little converter box right here and converts RCA cables into HDMI. So I plugged in the Roku and plugged the Roku into a cigarette lighter or a power outlet. And that allows me to send video and audio up to this TV and utilizing these uh, the kids can watch whatever they want on the Roku with my hotspot on the phone. And it's really, really helpful on road trips. So, uh, I think that's a really, really cool upgrade. And that harness is only like 15 bucks on Amazon. So if you have one of these and you're looking to utilize that without having to buy DVDs and put them in here and deal with all that, you can really upgrade the interior by putting a Roku in the back. This video is about what's wrong with this car. So of course we have a crack dash. And to be honest, this is not that bad for 400,000 miles. I've seen dashboards completely disintegrated and gone with half of that mileage. So this thing has held up really, really well. When it comes to these buttons, I'm sure a lot of you GM guys know that these buttons just go bad. Uh, all the, the stuff comes off of them from being touched. And unfortunately, mine has started to do that but for 400,000 miles i think it's held up really 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 good and this ac control system here has held up really well for 400,000 miles unfortunately the air compressor the ac compressor just took a crap finally it started to short out the fuse underneath the hood and let me tell you that was a freaking bummer man because i hate dealing with ac systems i i just absolutely hate it i it just is annoying uh but it is a part of living in Georgia where you need AC, but it's October. So hopefully I don't need it for a while and I can put it off as long as possible. But that AC compressor does need to be changed out. Um, and it just happened. So 
kudos to to chevy man Four hundred thousand miles on the stock ac compressor the window controls back there do not work although the windows do work with the driver controls i can put the windows up and down just if you're sitting in the back seat which my kids are usually sitting back there you can't control the windows so whatever but let's get to the part that i know all you guys are probably waiting on how does it run <laughs> so let's start her up and we're going to focus here on the cluster for a minute so All right, so she's running. And as you can see, I do have an ABS light that is due to one of the ABS sensors. I believe the front passenger side, if I'm not mistaken, that ABS sensor is bad. And I actually think my ABS pump is going out. So right now I have an ABS sensor disconnected on purpose so I don't utilize ABS at all. So the ABS pump uh, are known to go bad in these things and and unfortunately i think it is going bad because every now and then i'll get a red brake light up here uh up here and i just drive it because my brake fluid's good my brake pads are new um braking system's fine i just don't have abs which i don't really care for we got washer fluid and of course the tpms system because these are 2011 wheels but let's go over here so this is a new cluster or new to me cluster from a sierra i believe a sierra denali truck or some type of pickup truck i can't remember but there was a hundred and thirty two thousand mile difference when i replaced this cluster the reason why i had to replace the cluster is because one day i was driving and it stopped working all these readouts here just turned off on me and i couldn't read any transmission temperature controls or anything like that that this thing is going to show me in this side as well uh, so I just swapped it out. Now there was a 132,000 mile difference where this cluster had 132,000 miles less than what was on the truck at the moment. So if we go over to mileage, 271,000 miles. And if we add 132 to that, 403,000 miles. 403,000 miles on a 2007 Suburban with active fuel management. Insane. Blows my mind. Let's pop the hood. All right, you guys, let's look under the hood here. So first thing you are going to notice is my motor mount on the driver's side went bad. And yes, that is a strap holding down the driver's side of the motor. And hey, what do you want? You know, it's a 4x4 truck. That motor mount is extremely difficult for me to get to. I don't know if you guys have a hack to get to it, but I tried to get to it. I bought the motor mount and gave up. I wasn't going to deal with it. So I just strapped it down and it's been that way for like, I don't know, 20,000 miles or something like that. I've had this motor strapped down. So I've heard of old race car guys doing that, chaining motors to the chassis, etc. I was like, hey, I'll put a strap in it, you know, we'll see if it works. And it worked out really well. This is an active fuel management motor, but the active fuel management has been removed from the ECM, which is right down here. Again, thanks to Andy at PCM Tuners in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, again, link a description for him. So although there is active fuel management lifters and camshaft and all that stuff, it's not being utilized. And there's a lot of discussion on whether or not that's gonna help save your motor. Uh, the proof is in the pudding. It definitely helps save your motor. So if you have active fuel management, the best thing you can do is turn it off in the ECM or get the range device, which will turn it off uh, just by the OBD2 port. So definitely look into that if you have an active fuel management truck. Other than that, I have done a trunnion upgrade. Unfortunately, at some point, sometimes the rocker arms have these needle bearings that'll come out and destroy your motor. The last thing I want is my 400,000 mile motor to be destroyed by a bearing so i did a trunnion upgrade costs about 200 dollars, but gives me a lot of peace of mind it's not completely necessary it's kind of a race car mod but hey it gives me some peace of mind that the needle bearings aren't going to destroy my motor i did do an oil pickup tube o-ring which is located at the bottom of the oil pump and the reason why i did that is simply because of oil pressure this thing did drop down to zero oil pressure right here at the entrance of my neighborhood and 
Uh, I parked it. I already had the parts because when I bought the truck, it only had 20 PSI oil pressure. Now it sits at 40 PSI hot idle oil pressure. So let me show you here on the cluster. And there we go. 40 PSI oil pressure and we're definitely up to temp. So if you're running 30 PSI oil pressure in your GM truck with a 53486 in it, uh, that's okay. It's gonna run, it's gonna be fine. You're not causing any damage, but that's a really good indication that that uh, O-ring is going out on you. So definitely check into it. It's a $4 part. It's a $4 O-ring and it gives you a lot better peace of mind knowing that your oil pressure is not gonna drop to zero like it did me. As you can hear, there's no ticking, no knocking, no crazy noise. Uh, it actually runs fairly decent for a 400,000 mile 5.3. This is a LC9 motor, which means it's completely aluminum, aluminum block, aluminum heads, 243 799 heads, which are one of the better heads. So overall, it's actually a really, really good motor. And this does have a 4L60E transmission. I'm sure you guys are wondering if it's the original transmission, and it is. It's a 400,000 mile 4L60E transmission. I do have a cooler in it. There's the trans cooler right there. And that really, really helped out, I'm sure, giving this transmission some longevity. But again, this is what's wrong with it. So as far as what's wrong with it, nothing. Nothing's wrong with it. The motor mount's broken, but I fixed that. And I think I did a really good job fixing it, but yeah, <laughs> it is a 400,000 mile truck. So uh, you can hear an injector, something going on with an injector on this side. Uh, but as far as idling and any type of error codes or anything like that, there's really nothing going on here except for the AC compressor. So hopefully I can get that situated over the winter and not have to deal with it during the summer everything that you're seeing right now is original everything you're seeing has 400,000 miles on it all the way from the alternator to the intake manifold down to the oil pan radiator fans everything has 400,000 miles on it except for of course the transmission cooler so really not that bad of a truck for 400,000 miles it's all a matter of how you take care of it and if you have a 5.3 truck you definitely can get this kind of mileage out of your ride and i highly recommend doing what i've done you got the active fuel management delete in the computer you've got the transmission cooler you got the trunnion upgrade and the oil pickup tube o-ring those things right there i think there's four things those things right there is what's going to save this truck and keep it going on the road so proper maintenance just doing what matters there's one main thing that's wrong with this truck that is very annoying and i'm just not gonna fix it that is the rear main seal i am not gonna fix the rear main seal it leaks like crazy all the gaskets in this thing leak like crazy but the rear main seal is horrible and i'm not fixing it. i'm not gonna pull this motor uh and if i do i'm just gonna reseal up everything kind of do a complete overhaul on it but right now it doesn't call for all that work. Yeah, it leaks oil. It dirties my driveway. That sucks, but ultimately it does a really good job at what it needs to do and I'm not gonna mess with it. It's got exhaust leaks. It's got a rear main seal leak. It needs an AC compressor, uh, but that's that's it. And for 400,000 miles, man, that's a freaking win if you ask me. So thank you guys so much for watching another episode of the GMLA YouTube channel. My name is Andrew. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It means a lot. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. It really means a lot to me to see that kind of support from you guys. And I'll keep putting out videos. I'll get some customer projects on this channel and we'll have a lot of fun. Also, if you're not following me on Facebook, definitely check me out there, the GM outlet on Facebook. The link will be in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.